so now let's move to understanding how the importance score is used to rank these pages. So the first thing we have to take a look at is the idea of a web graph and what that is. And we're going to see how this can give a connectivity overview of the web pages and how they're interconnected with one another. So let's start with some terminology. A web page, we've been using that term, but it's really, it's a document on the web. So it's a document and you can go there and access the page and do whatever you, you want to do on that page. A hyperlink is a connection from a web page to a piece of data. So on the web pages themselves, you see some external links here that you can click on, and when you click on them, that'll bring you somewhere else. Now, typically, it'll bring you to another web page. So for our purposes here and what we're seeing, a hyperlink is a connection from a web page to another web page. So we have web pages, and then we have hyperlinks connecting web pages. Right. So now, before we talk about a web graph, and you could probably already understand what a web graph is, it's really just the web pages and how hyperlinks connect them together and we just draw that visually. But so a graph is a huge concept uh, mathematically and we, we will not go into much detail on what graph there is, but simple terminology here will suffice. And when we say graph, we're not referring to some like X, Y chart plot. That's, that's not what we're referring to. We're referring to something, a structure, a mathematical structure that has Nodes, which are also known as vertices, and those are represented typically as circles. So we have these nodes, and we have links or edges. So there's those are kind of interchangeable. So either vertices or edges or nodes and links. And um, the nodes are circles, and the links connect the nodes together. So we may have links like this. So if this is node A, this is node B, and this is node C, then I have a link between A and B. I have a link between B and C, and so on. I you know, I may have a link also between A and C, but maybe not. And um, it'll depend upon how the graph is connected. And so now we can take this and now we can apply that to a web graph, which is just a graph of web pages. So in this sense, now the nodes themselves become web pages, right? So we have web pages as our nodes, which we will still draw as circles, but the web pages become our nodes. So suppose we have just three web pages we're looking at here. and the links become the hyperlinks. So the hyperlinks are connected to them. So now, one thing that we have to make note of is that here we drew the links without any arrows or anything indicating a direction. Now, graphs can have directed links, in which case it's really only implying a one-way connectivity. So A may connect to B, but B may not connect to A, and C may connect to A, but A may not connect to C, and C may connect to B, for instance, B may not connect to C. So when we're dealing with a graph of the internet or a graph of the web pages, these links are directed because hyperlinks are only go one way. They don't just because A points to B doesn't mean B is going to have a hyperlink back to A. So if this is page A, maybe page A has a hyperlink to page B, and then page C has a hyperlink to page B, and so on, something like that. So a simple example of that would be if you are going, to, if you have a website. And your favorite artist also has a website, right? So this maybe this is your artist's website. This is your favorite artist right here. And this is you, and this is your website right here. Okay, so you may have a link on your page that goes to your artist's website. And there's a lot of other people that probably also have links that go to his website as well. But it doesn't mean that he's going to take a link and put it back to your page for every single person that puts a link to his page. So it's not, they're not bi-directional. And uh, otherwise, there would be a lot more people that were famous because they would just feed off of that and be able to gain a lot of fame. That obviously would, wouldn't work too well. But so now directed, the way that we indicate a directed graph is by having the links have arrows. And as we said, a web graph does have directed links. Another thing about a web graph is that it's very sparse. By sparse, we mean that most web pages aren't connected to one another directly. So for every web page, a web page has a very few number of neighbors, which we call them. So if we look at a node A here, A, uh, B is A's neighbor because A is connected to B and so on. He can get to him in just one path jump. Um, the number of neighbors that each node has is way smaller than the total number of nodes. So I mean, we have something like 60 billion nodes in the internet, right? So there's like 60 billion web pages. But the uh, Wikipedia page, which is uh, on the higher end of the number of hyperlinks you see, may have like 100 
links out to different pages. So 100 versus 60 billion is much, much smaller. And so by sparse, we mean that there's not a lot of links compared to the number of nodes. And the internet itself, as we said, has 60 billion nodes. So that that gives us kind of an issue here because there's no way that we could ever draw the graph of the internet and then do like a calculation on that because that would just take us our you know entire lifetime. We'd still never finish. So we're going to have to use examples here that are of much smaller scale with um, four, even five nodes maybe and look at those. But still, the ideas are the same. It's just done on a much larger scale. So the ideas are portable and, and they scale up very well. And Google has a lot of algorithms in place which scale them to very high data sets and very large data sets.